What's going on, my Sunshi Unit? It's your friendly neighborhood Sentiment here. So, back again with another classic Survivor Series pay per view review. I'm going to review one more classic Survivor Series show of the month. So, today I'm reviewing Survivor Series 2003. So, this show was at the American Airlines Center in Dallas, Texas on the 16th of November 2003. The attendance of the show was 13,487. Survivor Series 2003 received about 450,000 pay per view buys, upgrade than the previous year's Survivor Series show from 2002. That show was at MSG. It was the first Survivor Series under the WWE name. You got the return of Scott Steiner to the company and the debut of the Elimination Chamber match that's won by Shawn Michaels. Survivor Series 2002 received about 340,000 pay per view buys. I reviewed Survivor Series 2002 on this channel last year. Go and check out because that was the 20th anniversary of that show. It's considered to be one of the greatest Survivor Series shows of all time. Like Survivor Series 2002, this Survivor Series show is, once again, a duo-branded show. It's a Raw Smackdown show. So the commentators for Survivor Series 2003, for Raw we got JR and The King. For Smackdown we got Michael Cole and Taz. Um, the pay-per-view set for Survivor Series 2003, it's not like um, the previous year Survivor Series. Um, you got the LED um, entrance, you know, it was at MSG, but this was good. You know, you got like two match stipulations uh, around the ramp stage area of the show. You've got an ambulance and a graveyard site. Uh, the ambulance, we got the ambulance match between Shane McMahon versus Kane. We'll get to that later on. And the, like I said, the graveyard site for the Buried Alive match between the Undertaker and Mr. McMahon. Also, we'll get to that match later on in this review. So, um, this is the first Survivor Series with a Survivor Series match since Survivor Series of 2001. That was the climax of the Evasion storyline. That's another classic show to review for another time. Anyway, let's do a quick result of the... Um, it's, it's not really a dark match, it's a, a match on heat before the show. We got Tajiri with Akio, that's the future Jimmy Wan Yang. That's years before he became the Asian Cowboy. And Sakoda, who sadly passed away two years ago in 2021 at the age of 48. Um, yeah, you got Tajiri retain his Cruiserweight Championship against Jamie Noble. This time without Nidia, this revolve around Tajiri spray, spraying the black mist in the face of Nidia. That's another story for another time. Um, so it's just what it is, you know. Yeah, it was the beginning of the end of the whole Jamie Noble Nidia relationship, you know, on screen. Anyway, so the first match to kick off Survivor Series of 2003. Um, this is the first. Five on five Survivor Series Elimination Team match of the night. Uh, we got Team Angle versus Team Lesnar. So the teams represent Team Lesnar. Who represent Team Lesnar? We got the WWE Champion at the time, Brock Lesnar, The Big Show, Matt Morgan, Nathan Jones, and the A Train, that's the former Albert and the future Tenzine. Representing Team Angle, we got Kurt Angle, Chris Benoit, John Cena, Hulk Holly, and Bradshaw before he became JBL. He, had the, uh, he came out with the JBL hairstyle. It's funny, like a year later, he ended up becoming JBL and becoming the WWE Champion. So this is John Cena's first pay-per-view match as a babyface. Um, weeks prior, you know, um, Lesnar and Paul Heyman um, offering John Cena to join Team Lesnar, but unfortunately he kind of rejected the offer, so he got beaten down in the process, and now he's thrust as a babyface. You can tell, like, Cena's character is getting over, it's so red hot, you know, the rocket strap is on his back, the rocket strap on his back, you know, he's going to get that push, and soon to be, you know, getting shoved down people's throats, winning too much, but anyway, but his raps is so getting over, you know. In this um 
raps, you know, uh, perform on the show before the match starts, you know. You know, it will never fly today's today landscape, but um, he said he came through the curtains like a fetus. Other the rest of them are just afterbirth. Um, you know, I think he said about Nathan Jones and A Train, you know, they need to dig you know, he almost he almost dropped the M word, but instead, you know, he said about dig that hole bigger, something like that, I can't remember. Um, you know, he, he said like I don't need a freaking stable. He wants to exchange four of his partners with a one night stand with Sable. And towards the big show, he said, like, big shows, a whistle, blow me. <laughs> you know, see it. Wow. It's just like, you know, people crap on Cena's um, gimmick, you know, as the rapper because he's a white man rapping. But um, it's kind of good. You know, it's really got him over at the time. Um, Anyway. Um, Let's know at this moment in time, it's funny, like the last 2003 WWE pay-per-view I review on this channel was Vengeance 2003. Um, in the triple threat match of that show was Lesnar defending the belt against Kurt Angle and Big Show. Um, let, uh, you know, Big uh, Lesnar entered the match as a babyface on that show. He lost the WWE title to Kurt Angle in that triple threat match. Um, that was in July, so fast forward in the autumn in November. He's now, he just regained the WWE title to Kurt Angle in a Iron Man match on SmackDown. And this time he's now a heel once again because it's funny, like the previous year Survivor Series, you know, he was in the match against the Big Show. He's now teaming up, you know. It's funny, like the, they, they started this rivalry in 2002 and then they continued their rivalry in 2003. You know, they had the, uh, the stretcher match, they had a match on SmackDown when the Big Show collapsed the, um, the ring. And then, you know, months later, they're the buddy buddies, and now they're Survivor Series teammates. <laughs> um, yeah, Lesnar is, like, without Paul Heyman, he can't, you know, he's not really good on cutting a promo on the mic. You know, he can't really find, he's not really find his voice yet, but he's still into rapping, and it's not really, you know, Lesnar was a bit exposed. Anyway, um... For Harko Holly, this is Harko Holly's first pay per view match back since the injury because the previous year on SmackDown, I think it was in September of 2002, that Harko uh, Holly was in a, in a match against Brock Lesnar. Brock broke Harko Holly's neck with a botched power bomb. Then after that, you know, he's um continued to wrestle weeks after his uh, match with Lesnar with a broken neck. And then he yeah, took some time off to get his neck repaired. He came back to have have his vengeance towards Brock Lesnar. Uh, before the start of this match, you know, he had Hulk or Holly. Uh, before Lesnar trying to get in the ring, uh, Hulk or Holly attacked um, Lesnar, you know, beat him down. And, and that forced uh, Hulk or Holly to be disqualified and the first person to be eliminated in this Survivor Series match. And don't worry, folks. Uh, Hulk or Holly went on to challenge Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble two months later. So the second person, uh, before that, you know, the, the Survivor Series match was fast-paced. It's just boom, 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 bam, action. You know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but it's, yeah, it's kind of rushed, but it was kind of like very, really good at the same time. So the second person got eliminated was the A-Train. Got eliminated by Bradshaw with the clothesline from Al. And then the Big Show eliminated Bradshaw with the choke slam. Yeah, it was so fast paced. Good, you know, it's a good way to like kick off the show. Um, Angle eliminated both uh, Matt Morgan and Nathan Jones. You know, you had uh, eliminate, eliminate Morgan with the Angle slam and Nathan Jones with the Ankle lock. And then Brock Lesnar eliminated Kurt Angle with the FI. So he eliminated the team captain. And then Brock Lesnar eliminate, got eliminated by Chris Benoit. Uh, Chris Benoit uh, made Lesnar tap out with the cripple crossface. And the fans in the, the American Airlines Center ch chanted, you tap out was um, Brock Lesnar. Because a f I think about a few months prior at SummerSlam, I think Brock t got tapped out by Kurt Angle with the ankle lock, you know. Um, I'll, I'll get to more of that uh, la uh, later on or shortly. Um, so the final two 
Uh, so thought won this match was yeah John Cena and Chris Benoit. Um, yet yeah, in the end, Cena hit the Big Show with the chain and the FU for the win. And yeah, this was a bit the start of a long bill for John Cena and the Big Show because they fought in the opener of WrestleMania 20 the following year, where Cena went, went on to win his first. Um, about uh, I've got to mention this, yo, Big Show. Um, entered this match as the United States Champion, defeat Eddie Guerrero previous month at No Mercy, and then funny like months later he ended up dropping the belt to Cena. That's another story from another time. So uh, Cena and Benoit can embrace, show their respect. And also minutes later, there was a segment with Josh Matthews and Brock Lesnar. You know, you got Josh Matthews interviewing Brock Lesnar about, you know, the Survivor Series match, you know, Brian <laughs> you know, you know, you had Josh Matthews <laughs> kind of bust uh Lesnar's balls about like you did uh, lose, you know, and Brock's bragging about, hey, do not lose. And and yet, uh, you got the first interaction between him and Goldberg. It's kind of like setting up their match at WrestleMania the following year. It's a slow build. So I forgot to mention that. And since since uh, since I'm talking about Benoit, he, since he t made uh, Brock Lesnar tap out, you know, it's very rare that Brock tap out. He's, like I said, he got tapped out by Kurt Angle at... Um, uh, SummerSlam, and now to Benoit on the show. Uh, Benoit will challenge Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at, uh, on SmackDown the following month. So, moving on to the next match. Uh, by the way, it was a really good opener to kick off the show. Uh, that was, a, you know, so let's move on to the next match. So, this is the first of three championship matches on the show. The first one's for the WWE Women's Championship. Marley Holly defending the belt against Lita. You know, two good workers in the business, you know, Molly Holly and uh, Lita. Okay, Le this is Lita's one of her first matches back in the company. I forgot to mention this, you know, um, the la I know, you know, I reviewed uh, Unforgiven 2003 last year on this channel. Go and check it out. Uh, she did, had her first match back since the injury because, like Hawk or Holly, you know, um, Lita injured her neck the previous year. While not in a match, but while filming Dark Angel, I think that was a Buffy the Vampire Slayer spin-off, I think. Um, it's been a long time since I um, watched Buffy, but um, yeah, he, she injured her neck. Um, he came, she came back in September time, now challenging um, Molly Holly for the title. So Molly Holly won the belt. Yeah, Molly Holly won the belt. On the 28th of July's episode of Monday Night Raw in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, and speaking of Molly Holly, you know, she's wearing like a wristband with the uh, initial CH that stands for Crash Holly. By the way, this overshadows of the death of Mike Lockwood. Mike Lockwood is the real name of Crash Holly. Crash Holly uh, died, or she, he, she, I thought you'd end up committed suicide, but he unfortunately he died of a drug overdose 10 days earlier. He, I think he died at the age of 31, I think. He, yeah, he's 31. Um, the most highlight of his career, you know, is winning the mid low card titles in WWE. Like, he won like that. I think he was hard, multiple time hardcore champion. I think he was light heavyweight champion. I think he was European champion. And he won the tag team titles with Harkle Holly, his kayfabe cousin. So it's just sad that, you know, wrestlers, um, you know, hit their careers cut shut due to whether it's injury or death. You know, it's just, you know, pro wrestling. Pro wrestling's pro wrestlers died very young. You know, it's you know, pro rest pro wrestling has the highest rate of deaths. Anyway, let's talk about this match between uh Molly Holly and Lita. I think this was good. This was a good match, you know. It's um, it's a, sh it's a shame it's short, you know. I thought it was a ten minute match, but it was six minutes. But they made the most of what it is, you know. It was fast paced. It was good, you know. Like I said, both Lisa and Molly Holly, you know, good workers in the business, you know. Um, it was it was it was back and you know back and forth. Um. Anyway, in the end, uh, Lita was going for her, her tra traditional, like, trademark moonsault, but Molly Holly got out of the way, and Molly Holly hit the Molly go round onto Lita, but she also kicked out. In the end, um, 
you know, uh, Molly Holly um, exposed one of the, I think it was a middle turnbuckle, turnbuckle pad and hit Lita with a drop toe hold. And, you know, Lita's face hit with the exposed turnbuckle. She didn't really, she didn't really bled, but um, she ended up pinning Lita after that to win and retain the women's championship. Um, yeah, it was a good one. I wish I had more time, but besides that, like I said, it was a decent, good, fun match to watch. Both Lita and Molly Holly, future WWE Hall of Famers, you know. You know, yeah, the main and most of what it is, you know, it's back then. Yeah, it's back then. They didn't really have more time. You know, it's just a, pit, a piss break. You know, it's a shame. Compared right now, you, I think they'll get like 15 minutes, you know. You know, it's not like they're but like models, you know, they're both good looking uh, wrestlers. You know, but they also focus on the, the work ethic of a female women's wrestler. Anyway, let's move on to the next match. So the next match, we've got the ambulance match. Shane McMahon taking on Kane. This is a continuation of their rivalry. Um, the fought in the last man standing match at Unforgiven in September. It, 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 started, it started when Kane, you know, became psycho ever since he lost the match to Triple H. It was a world title versus mass match on Raw. In June, Kane lost the match, he lost the world title, and also lost his mask, gets forced to show his face. He did show his face, um, and then the next few <laughs> the, the next few months he's on a rampage, you know, doing these over-the-top crazy shit like um, setting fire to Jim Ross's back, um, tombstoning Linda McMahon on the stage, uh, chokeslam uh, Eric Bischoff uh, off the stage. Um, and it's still continuing all this uh, over the top shit with his rivalry with Shane McMahon, you know. Um, you know, you got Shane, you know, kicking uh, Kane into the the fiery, uh, the fire, the fire dumpster bin. Kane um, electrocute Shane McMahon's balls and then they took it into the next gear. You know, Shane put Kane into the limo and ran the limo. But towards the tractor fan, and Kane's inside of the fan, put Kane in the hospital, and then they, they end up fighting in the hospital. It's so over the top and and psychotic, you know, and what and wild. Um, the match between Kane and Shane, I think this is the second best match of the night. You know, I'll get to another match. I'll get to that later on. But this was really good, you know. Over the, it's continue of the over the top shit, you know. Like one more of the match, find outside. Shane drive a car, ran, uh, ran over Kane into the uh, security box. You know, like I said, over the top. It's wacky. It's wild. Um, you know, I think they yeah, they you know, one more of the match. You know, you know, Kane grabbed the still steps. Shane got the chair. Shane used the chair on Kane. Hit him on the head while he's holding the still steps, and the steps kind of fall on his face. And while Kane got hit in. Onto the steps, Kane and Shane whacked the chair onto the still steps. You know, it felt shot. It felt, there's no, sadly there's no blood in this match. I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any blood blood in the previous match at Unforgiven. It's a shame, but um, I want to see the color, but it's just what it is. Uh, yeah, they will fight. Yeah, um, yeah, they'll fight. <laughs> there's one good spot, you know. Um, I think uh, Kane put like I think Shane put a trash can towards Kane's balls. This kind of like black box, and then and he um jumped onto the on um, the top of the um the ambulance and performed the coast to coast. You know that was good. Yo, Shane is a fucking daredevil, man. You know every time he does these daredevil spots, you know whether it's jumping off the top of a pay per view set or stage set or or hell in the cell, man. Man, I call him daredevil, man. Not. The superhero Daredevil. He's an actual Daredevil man. He's kind of like, I feel like he's like the evil Knievel of professional wrestling. You know, he he kind of you know like put he truly put his body on the line. Um. Anyway, um, I feel like Kane kind of threw uh Shane into the 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 windscreen of the ambulance. Um, and also the kind of hitting like moved. Uh, I think Kane uh Shane hit Kane with a DDT onto the hard the hard concrete floor. You know, I, I thought Shane would win this match. You know, he's putting Kane in the ambulance, but Kane managed to get out, hit the tombstone power driver. He kind of before that, he kind of throws Shane like a dart. So Shane what Kevin Nash did to Rey Mysterio in 1996 while they were in WCW. 
Um, and then I think he hit the Tombstone Powder onto the concrete floor, put him in the ambulance, and won. And Kane and Kane did that la that psychotic laugh, and that was it. You know, I think it was a really good match. You know, second best match of the night. The other match when I get to that later on, that was technically the match of the night. But um, I said in my review of Unforgiven 2003, I'm going to say in my review of Survivor Series of 2003, I think this rivalry with, with Shane did Kane dirty. I think it has to do with, like, Kane have to sell a lot, you know. It's, I feel like it's, they're acting like this is a slasher film, you know, like Kane's Jacob Goodnight from See No Evil, and Shane's this scrappy, mortal human but um yeah, Kane sold a lot, you know. But um, they missed the like, they, they really dropped the ball on Kane on this, you know. I think there was a lot of money on the table for g getting Kane that push. Like this one year that Kane should have got that push was in two thousand and three. Like yeah, this is his best year, you know. Ever since he his mask was removed, he's no longer wearing the mask, you know. Doing these psychotic things with Linda McMahon to Bishop to Jr. To, uh, uh, Shane McMahon, um, and he's never got that. Um, you know, I feel like they should have really struck when the iron was hot. They should have really pulled the trigger on a, a massive game push. Unfortunately, for whatever reason, they just didn't do it. You know, I think that's um, that it's a shame for Kane, man. I think Kane is a good working man. You know, he should have got pushed more times. It's so in these t years that he was on a roll. He should have got pushed. And some of these years, like, he's kind of got, got that push. Like, 2010, I don't think he got that push. But it's just for, like, like they never do anything with Kane. I feel like he's just kind of like an afterthought. I'm not, and don't really see Kane being this, like, the man. It's just, it's the shame. It's really a fucking shame. I've, Kane's got to be the top heel of Raw at the time. It's just what it is, man. I don't want to get into it, you know. It was kind of the, yeah, this is truly the end of the Shane mcmahon Kane rivalry. And it's a shame. It went, no one gone over. Like, Shane never got over. Kane, it's very shame for, it's, it's a shame for Kane. He beat Shane at, uh, um, again. And now he beat Shane again at Survivor Series. And, yeah, and it's just like, it should be, like, it should be, you know, like, like an upgrade for Kane, who went on to do big, big, bigger things after that. But unfortunately, it's a, a Hayden, man. It's just a, you know, a burden, man. It's just what it is, man. So let's move on to the next match. Um, So the next match, um, this is the second of three championship matches on the show. And this is for the WWE Tag Team Championships on SmackDown. The Bashing Brothers, Danny and Doug with Shaniqua. I'll get some more of Shaniqua. Um, shortly, uh, defending the belts against Los Guerreros. The Los Guerreros are, <laughs> I say Los Guerreros, I mean Los Guerreros, my apologies. So, uh, yeah, you got Eddie and Chavo Guerreros. Um, it's funny, like, speaking of Vengeance of 2003, Eddie won the United States title tournament to win the United States Championship, you know, the revived United States Championship, you know. Yeah, they brought that title due to the evasion storyline, but it was more like a prop. But they brought it back as a mid-card title on SmackDown. Eddie won it. That was in July. And then I think I think it was a month months later than him and Chavo won the tag team titles. So it's so fast forward in October. Eddie lost or he lost his titles. You know, he lost the United States title to the big show at No Mercy. And then months and then weeks later he uh, him and Chavo dropped the uh, the WWE Tag Team Championships to the, the debut of the Bashings. Uh, Shaniqua, Lyndon Miles, well, she was the second winner of Tough Enough alongside, alongside Jackie Gaida. Um, I forgot to mention this, yeah, Matt Morgan was also in the same season as Lin Lyndon Miles. Um, Linda, Linda Miles, Shaniqua, she didn't do much, you know, in her time in the company. I'll get some, uh, I'll talk about it a, little, a bit shortly. So, uh, the match between the Los Guerreros and the Bashans. Uh, the Bastions ended up becoming members of JBL Cabinet the following year and ended up becoming Paul Heyman's right guards when ECW came back as the third brand in 2006. That was in the, the final, that was a final few months of Heyman's time in the company. Anyway, uh, the match between the Bastions and the Guerreros, um, this was fun. It was like, let, 
It liked the opener, it was fast paced, was boom 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 into the action. Shaniqua, um, she didn't really hurt this man. She like she um a close line, I think it was Eddie or Charbo. Um, she kinda distracted the referee. I don't think she hurt the match, you know, she kinda helped it, you know. There was one funny moment in this match, you know. You know, you had Char uh, Eddie hit uh Shaniqua with the frog splash and then I think Eddie and Charbo kinda spanked Linda Miles' ass. That was kind of funny. Um, in the end, I think Chavo hit one of the bashings with the um, the tornado DDT, and Eddie caught in the crossfire, and then one of the bashings pinned Chavo to win this match and retain the tag team titles. Um, it's, a shame, it's a shame for Shaniqua, man. Um, like Nidia, man, they're good. I, I don't know about the like like wrestlers but they're good as managers you know Shaniqua you know I wish they do more with her I think with the Bashan's gimmicks before they're part of the part of the cabinet I think they're being sex slaves you know sh you know when sex um outfits you know it's edgy at the time but um with Shaniqua I feel I wish they'd done more with her man I feel like after that she was gone from the company and you never see her ever again you know I wish they'd done more with her you know I think She's got that China presence, you know, she, the, she's muscular, but, um, yeah, it's just a shame, but, um, as for Eddie and Chavo, this is going to be the start of their rivalry, was it late, that'll be in late 03, it will continue into the start of 2004, and they'll they won't tag team ever again, they won't tag, as, you know, because Eddie and Chavo, you know, they are, uncle and nephew even though they, because the Bashans are not really brothers you know but um with um yeah with um eddie and chavo they kind of they won't like tag team partners ever again they won't tag team ever again but that's that's until eddie passed away two years later it's just a shame it's, you know because chavo ended up doing the curly white character that's a another story for another time but besides that fun it was a fun match to watch Anyway, moving on to this second 5-on-5 five -five Survivor Series match. This time's on Raw. Team Bischoff taking on Team Austin. So, um, you know, Austin and Bischoff, they're not competing. They're kind of like managers. So, the, the, uh, the, play, the wrestlers represent Team Bischoff. We've got Chris Jericho, Christian, Randy Orton, Big Papa Pump Scott Steiner, Mark Henry, um with Theodore Long. Holla 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 player. You got Stacey Kibler in the corner of Scott Steiner. Oh um and that's it. You know it's yeah five and five. And and then the wrestlers represent Team Austin. We got Shawn Michaels. Um and but I forgot to mention this Randy Orton's part of the represent evolution by the way. Anyway so we got Shawn Michaels, RVD, Booker T, the Dudleys. So how this going to go? How are they doing this match anyway? So before that, before that, you had this stuff with Mark Cuban and the coach and Bischoff, you know. I thought it's going to be, it's a bit filler, you know. I said it in previous classic pay-per-view reviews, you know, save these segments on weekly TV, not on a pay-per-view. That's how you spend a lot of money. But um, anyway, um, yeah, the coach, you know, is bragging like he injured his neck um, because he suffered, he took the, he ate the 3D by the hands of the Dudleys on the go home raw. You know, he said, I'll be, I'll be okay, blah, blah, blah. But he kind of confront Mark Cuban. Cuban says, you know, he wants to see Austin kicking Eric Bischoff's ass. And then Bischoff confronting um, Mark Cuban's, you know. And then, you know, Bischoff says, you know what, I, you, I, you know, I run this arena. It's my uh, my building. And then Cuban pushed uh, Eric Bischoff over. And then Orin came out of nowhere, hit an RKO out of nowhere onto Cuban and Cuban really sells that RKO pretty damn well. It's gotta be the best sells for a non wrestler to hit a finisher at the finisher by a, an actual wrestler. Anyway, so why are they doing this Team Bischoff versus Team Austin uh match? So it started in March, you know, the night after WrestleMania, you know, Eric Bischoff, you know, fired Stone Cold Steve Austin. It's a way to win off Stone uh, Austin because outside of the fans, you know, he wrestled his final match as a full time wrestler. So Linda McMahon um appointed um Austin as a co Raw GM 
with Eric Bischoff, you know, they've been feuding for months. They were, you know, you know, it's a real life rivalry because uh, you know, you know the story. If you don't know, I explained briefly. Um, you know, uh, Bischoff fired Austin in WCW while Austin was hurt. You know, that's the brief part. You know, you know the the fourth, you know, the fight at No Mercy, uh, not No No Mercy, No Way Out at in February. Then they continued their rivalry throughout the whole of 2003. They had that funny Rennick triathlon on, at Bad Blood in June. Austin was treating like the heels on Raw like dits, you know, physically beating them up, you know. And Linda McMahon told told um Austin, you cannot beat up the wrestlers. Austin, the only the only way Austin can put their hands on the on the wrestler if he gets provoked. Uh, physically, again, like you, you, you only get, you only, you only put the hands on them if he gets provoked. So Austin, uh, not Austin, Bischoff proposed Austin a match at Survivor Series. It was a five on five Survivor Series match. You know, if Austin's team wins, he will, like, he'll uh, no longer, like, like he can really put put his hands on the wrestlers. But if Bischoff teams wins, Austin. For, has to force to step down as a co raw GM. So there was a lot of stakes in it, and it is a lot of stakes for Austin. You know, if Austin wins, you know, he can able to put his hands on the wrestlers. Mostly, yeah, he's kind of like this, had this mini view with Jericho and Christian. You know, in the video package, you know, you got, you know, Batista going in the face of Austin, calling him a goddamn uh, coward. Um, it's, you know, you know, yeah. You know, it's just what it is, man. But um, the um, team Bischoff is the team Austin match. You know, this is match of the night. You know, um, people say this is one of the best, uh, you know, great Survivor Series matches of all time. Hard to say. It's one of the best, man. Um, like the um, like the um, the first Survivor Series, Survivor Series match of the night. You know, you, know, you had the the fast pace eliminations, but this is more flashed out, man, because the opener was 13 minutes long this survivor series match was 27 minutes long it was about nearly half an hour it was good it was intriguing um the first person got eliminated was scott steiner because it's funny like you know i unforget really for like june and september you know he's few do it's really sad for scott steiner you know because at the previous year survivor series you know he was a Big, he was he kind of debuted or returned to the company, you know, being down Matt Mo uh, Matt Hardy and Chris Nowinski, and then and then that was the end of two thousand two. Fast forward to the start of two thousand three. I think that feud with Triple H done him in him done him in in his return to the company as a single star. He was in the company before teaming up with his brother Rick, and then throughout the whole bulk of two thousand three, he's kind of feuding with Tess. He had a horrible match at Bad Blood. He had a, another horrifying match in Off Again. I think one of these matches, Scott Steiner trip over the ring apron. Yeah, he was really, they really ruined Scott Steiner, you know, in his um, return to the second run of the company. So, anyway, Steiner uh, locked in uh, Booker T with the Steiner recliner. Stacey Kibler interf uh, really interfere. Bish, uh, Steiner uh, let go of the uh, the submission hold, you know, he's, because, <laughs> by the way, um, Austin, Booker T, Mark Henry, and Shawn Michaels are the name for Texan, even though Shawn was born in Arizona, and he kind of grew up in Texas, so, by default, but, you know, but anyway, so, st st you know, Steiner let go of the submission hold, kind of kind of confronts Stacey Keebler, uh, and then Booker T hits Scott, Scott Steiner with the um, bookend to eliminate him. It's cheer for Scott Steiner. You know, he ended up leaving the company in 2004. You won't see him again until he gets inducted in the WWE Hall of Fame in 2022, almost 20 years later. Anyway, so the, the second person got eliminated was uh, Booker T, got eliminated by Mark Henry. Um, Henry hit the Will's Strongest Slam onto Booker T. Um, that set up a match at on again. So, and then RVD and the Dudleys um, hit their finisher onto Mark Henry. It was a 3D and a five star frog splash combo. And then 
Rob uh, and then uh, yeah, Rob Van Dam eliminated Randy Orton. Uh, no, 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 I'm lying. Randy Orton eliminated RVD with the RKO. Like it, it, that sort of bear match at Armageddon, man. So it was fast paced elimination, and then the Dudleys got eliminated by G uh, Jericho and Christian. I think uh, I think Devon got eliminated by Jericho with a flashback. Christian hit the Onkritia onto uh, Bubba Ray Dudley, the future Bully Ray, by the way. Uh, it's funny, like, I don't think you'll call his finisher right now because he can't. In AEW, they kind of change Luchasaurus' name to Kill Switch, but. So yeah, Christian hit the um prettier onto Bubba Ray Dudley. So Sean is the last man surviving. You know Jericho, Jericho and Christian really beat the fuck out of Shawn Michaels. You know hitting him. He, uh, yeah, Christian kind of slingshot uh Shawn Michaels into the ring post. He played buckets, man. I think he got hit in the head with a chair. He was fucking bleeding crazily. It's funny. It's funny. Like five years later, they ban blood. Man, you know, the Rufus Aggression Air Man, it's got to be one of the most violent um period in WWE history, you know, with blood, you know, if you watch like a Hell in a Cell match, Steel Cage match, Limitation Chamber match, you know, they always had the colour. So Sean really kicked he kicked on, even though he's bleeding to death, he's not he's still alive to this day, but he's fucking ble he's passing you know, he's bleeding, he's out of energy, you know, he hits a uh, Christian with the switching music. Uh, Jericho's going for the um. It's funny, like Jer. This is Sean and Jericho's first in-ring interaction on probably on pay-per-view since their match at WrestleMania 19 in March. Um. Anyway, so Jericho was going for the balls of Jericho. Sean came into the small package to eliminate Chris Jericho. Jericho got pissed off and like the sole loser hit Sean Michaels with the chair. He kind of confronted uh Stone Cold Steve Austin, telling him screw you, Austin. Like I said, he goes Jericho and Austin had this mini feud. You know, because, you know, while Austin was the co-GM. Anyway, so the final two in this match is Shawn Michaels and Randy, or Randy Orton. By the way, Shawn was feuding members with Evolution. Like, um, because Orton and Shawn fought at Unforgiving in September. Orton wins. <clears throat> because, yeah, it's a bit of a break of the rivalry between Shawn Michaels and Triple H. Anyway, so, um, Austin, like I said, he's... Not supposed to attack someone physically, but um, he kind of kind of broke the rules, you know. He ended up um, hitting Orton with the Stone Cold Stunner. He put his hands on Bischoff, attacked, trying to attack, chasing Bischoff out of the out of the the ring and out of the arena. And then suddenly Batista came out, hitting uh Sean with the switch uh not the switchy music uh the Batista bomb, and Orton uh pins uh Shawn Michaels to win this match. And yeah, Stone Cold Steve Austin is now gone from WWE. He's no longer the the co Raw GM. Austin's uh, face looks sad. And yeah, it's just wow, man. You know, match of the night. You know, there were stakes. You know, in it because Austin's jumps on the line. You know, and this is the start of Randy Owens' um streak of Survivor Series matches that last until what 2011. Um, you know. Way Barrett was the victor, you know. I think it was streak of Survivor Series matches, you know. I think it's Survivor, yeah, Survivor Series matches, you know, because I think, yeah, I think, yeah, he, he had a, a great, he's kind of had a an undefeated streak at Survivor Series. It lasted until 2011, eight years. So anyway, so Austin kind of revived a bloodied Shawn Michaels. They hug, show their respects, and laugh, and then Austin cut. The farewell promo. It's the farewell promo speech that he never got a chance in Seattle because the only people, the three people outside of the fans, knowing that Austin wrestled his final match are The Rock, Vince McMahon, and Jim Ross. You know, I said I said it in my review of WrestleMania 19. I'm gonna say it right now. You know, Austin says you know he started his career in Dallas, Texas in 1989. Now he's ended his career in Dallas, Texas in 2003. You know, he kind of, before that, yeah, the coach came out, you know, singing, hey, hey, goodbye, chance. You got a bunch of police officers trying to escort Austin out of the building. Austin beat down the police officers and the coach. He grabbed two beers, placed the two beers inside the ring, 
you give the arm the fans a little finger as the fan as support you know he's not really you know as the fan support you know and Arsenal right towards the sunset you know yeah it's a way I think this match was good it's yeah it's a good way to win up Austin as a full-time character you know you know giving Austin that closure you know like Austin in the last few years before he actually retired you know his full-time schedule was interfered due to you know the injury he had in late 99 missed the whole of 2000 because he's still recovering from neck injury and then the previous year in 2002 he walked out of the company but they kind of treat Stone Cold Steve Austin as Steve Austin the man you know contender contender of cha of championships so you know I, I think Austin is the main catalyst of the company's uh, second boom period success they went on several years before so it was the end of Austin's time as a full-time character but not it's not the last time he's still St uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin uh, appeared on WWE program for the next few years you know he appeared a month later at the first tribute at the troops you know giving uh, Eric Bischoff his revenge him with a Stone Cold Stunner then he kind of refereed the Goldberg Lesnar match at WrestleMania 20 then he confronts uh, I think he confronted Muhammad Hassan Pit in Piper's Pit at WrestleMania 21, you know, refereed the Battle of the Billionaires match, and then years later, refereed the Michael Cole, Jerry the King Lawler match at WrestleMania 27, and so on and so forth. So, so I advise watching this match if you got this on the network. So, moving on to the next match, this is a buried and live match The Undertaker taking on Vince McMahon. It started at No Mercy, you know. Um, you had uh, the previous month, by the way. So Undertaker wants to become the WWE champion for the fifth time. Vince cast Undertaker a uh, cast Undertaker the title in a match against Brock Lesnar. It was at No Mercy. It was a biker chain on the pole match. This is set up this match on the show. You know, I think he had a handicap match. After the handicap match, you know, Vince confronted him. Said he. Along he will, he will be breathing in and breathing out. If Vince is still alive, he will never be WWE champion. You know, he teased like he's going to face Brock Lesnar uh, uh, to face him at Survivor Series um, in a buried line match. But unfortunately, he didn't want to face um, Vince McMahon. Um, he didn't want to face Brock Lesnar for the champ uh, for the championship at Survivor Series. He wanted to face Vince McMahon. And also before that, you know, on SmackDown, he kind of confront him. Because he said about pushing, um, you know, he kind of dis disrespect with fans, you know, he pushed his wife around and beat up his daughter, you know, you know, referring to like Linda McMahon, you know, you know, pushing, pushing her around, you know, like having affairs, you know, while Linda is comatose, written like in into recently he had this on screen relationship affair with Sable and also being up. Your daughter, referring to Stephanie McMahon, because on the same show at No Mercy, fans compete in a father and daughter I Quit match. That's forced Stephanie to step down as the SmackDown GM. Paul Heyman is now the new Raw GM, uh, SmackDown GM. My apologies. You know he's uh, so. Um, the, the promo before their match Survivor Series. I don't. You, I don't think you're gonna find this on the network. You know, fancy was. You know. You know he's. Overreacting, your Heyman dropped the bombshell that he was giving Undertaker the night off until Survivor Series finishes over the top. You, you probably find this on, on YouTube. Um, your fence um went over the top. You know he's doing the whole I'm um, slaughtering the infidels, born again, the stuff with religion. You know it's this is three years before the stuff when his feud with Shawn Michaels. You know doing the whole Vince McMahon versus God storyline. But um anyway, he's super evil. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, you know, in that promo with him, he says that the other, you know, the terrorist is going to blow up the Undertaker's house, Taker's um, children's going to be kidnapped, and his wife going to get raped by a motorcycle gang in front of the Undertaker, man. Wow, that's just like, pfft, that's super dark, you know. Anyway, so, you know, yeah, Undertaker's promo, this is like weeks before the show, he brings up like he destroyed wrestlers, name dropping Bret Hart. This is years before Bret Hart, you know, this is that time Bret was still on very bad terms with the company and Steve Austin never treat his, uh, disrespect his um, uh, wrestlers. He cared about his family glass, you know. It's a good promo, Undertaker cut. 
Um, you can probably find us on the YouTube. You can probably find us on YouTube or the network. Um, anyway, so the match between the Undertaker and Vince McMahon. This is more like an angle disguise as a match. You know, Vince came out holding his hands in a prey jester. He wants him. He don't want to be in this buried alive match, but um, Undertaker has none of it. Hit uh really uh. uh like punch Vince in the face. He is also bleeding buckets, man. Vince, Jesus Christ, in that time period in the Ruthless Aggression era, he is, like, every time he's in this match, he always had the color, man. He's bleeding buckets, man. Undertaker is just, like, beating Vince for the whole bulk of the match, you know. Uh, it's funny, like, in in March, you know, he put up his suits against Hulk Hogan at WrestleMania 19. Fast forward in March. He's been getting the crap beat by the Undertaker, you know. Undertaker's like being the fuck out of fence, you know, hitting with a TV monitor, with a shovel, and and also breaking the leg of Vince McMahon. It's a shame what he did in 1998, you know. Um plays his uh, leg underneath the he kinda of, like grab he put he put he plays um one, I think it was his leg, onto one still steps, he grabbed the other, slammed it around his um, leg. Um, it's, not on the same, it's not on the same level as his um, injury in 1998 with Vince, you know, Undertaker locked in a submission hold, and then he, he, he kind of slammed it into, into a, he kind of broke it with a still steps, but that was like, oh my god, that was dislocated, and oh my god, that was so cringeworthy, you know, that was in 1998, but in 2003 that was kind of okay. Um. Anyway, so he pick up the live, a liveless fence. You know, fence did kind of pull up his jukes. You know, I don't, I don't want to say, I don't want to say it's, I don't think doing it. Uh, you know, it's more like Undertaker, more so the offense. You know, I wish fence put a little bit of, uh, his jukes up. You know, you know, be like it's more like seventy five to thirty five. Um. Anyway, so Vince, yeah, fence kind of like a low blow the Undertaker, throwing a, a dirt in his eyes. You know. He kind of briefly put Undertaker in the hole, but he managed to climb out. He's about to uh, go on into the digger. Suddenly, the fire blew in his face. Suddenly, Kane came along, attacked the Undertaker, put Undertaker in the hole, put Fence out. Fence going into the digger and and dump a lot of dirt onto the hole and bury the Undertaker alive. And the announcers brought that you know this is Undertaker's fourth. A very delayed match in his uh, career. I'll get to more of that shortly. Kane's like on his knees, holding, he kind of like wiping the dirt around the gravestones. You know, he's buried his Kayfay brother alive. And yeah, it's set up a match at WrestleMania 20. Um, anyway, I wish Undertaker wins this match, in my opinion, you know. Because Undertaker's record in Buried Alive matches are is terrible. You know, I think he lost lost to Mankind, he lost to Austin, um, he lost to Fence now, and then a few years later he lost to Kane in twenty ten. I think the only time he won a Buried Alive match it was on SmackDown. Is a I think it was a triple threat match. Oh, no, it was a tag team match, the, the Unholy Alliance versus the Rock and Stop Connection. But yeah, his record is very poor. You know. I wish that there's just, I mean, it's the final, it's a way to run off The Undertaker, you know, because The uh, yeah, Undertaker is rehabbing all these injuries, and it's the last time we see The Undertaker as the American badass for another 16 years until his feud with AJ Styles at uh, WrestleMania 36 Night 1 in a Boneyard match, you know, because he came back, you know, he, he set up his brother, he set up his match against Kane at WrestleMania 20 the following year, he came back as the dead man. But I never knew this, you know, this is years before this, you know, I never knew that Undertaker wants to spend the rest of his career as an American badass, you know, that the biker gimmick is the, one of the best versions of The Undertaker, but um, I don't I like him as the dead man, but it's his, um, his first run in, what was it, 1992, 99, or uh, 2004 to 2019, but um, yeah, it's just what it is, man, I don't want to have to play that much, so... You know, yeah, it's a fun, they got a fine way to run off the Undertaker, and this is it. You know, it's yeah, fans booed, but you know, people want to see the Undertaker be being the fuck out of fence. But um, they they accomplished one thing, but like I said, it's just a, oh, it's not, is that a great match? No, 
Is it a bad match? No. But like I said, I don't really call it a match. It's more like a angle disguised as a match. It's just what it is. So moving on to the main event. Um, this is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Goldberg defending the belt against Triple H and uh, yeah, well, Triple H. I almost say Triple H and Ric Flair, but Goldberg defending the belt against Triple H. Um, it's a rematch from Unforgiven. Goldberg defeat Triple H for the World Heavyweight Championship on Unforgiven in September, but that was too little, too late. Goldberg should have won. Should have won the title at SummerSlam. So as a result, Triple H is pissed off. He put a hundred thousand dollar bounty towards Goldberg to injured Goldberg. It's a shame what Harley Race did to Ric Flair. It's a build up to their match at Starcade. You know, put Ric Flair uh, put Ric Flair out of the business. So yeah, the wrestlers, the heel wrestlers, trying to be, trying to take down Goldberg and his career. Uh, the one person really. Um, uh, really took the bounty money was Batista, you know, injured, he injured, uh, he, he plays a still, uh, put the, um, the still chair, or he placed a chair around his leg, and broke it, and broke his ankle, and in this match, he was, it, it didn't really, like, it's, it's around, it is in the ankle part, he's kind of wrapped around his calf, you know, um, the build up to this didn't feel like a rivalry, uh, the, the rivalry didn't feel like a build, to what, it was more leaning towards, Goldberg and Batista instead of Goldberg Triple H, but um, anyway, so Batista received the, the bounty money award to take out Goldberg, and he accomplished it, kind of accomplished it, you know, like I said, it's just a spin, it's an homage, like I said, of what uh, Holly Race did to Ric Flair in 1983, anyway, and I think the next time they did this um uh, angle storyline in any wrestler from any company will be in TNA a decade later when Dixie Carr planned money to take out AJ Styles, building up to AJ Styles' match with Bully Ray at Bound for Glory of that year. Anyway, so the match between Triple H and Goldberg. I covered their match at Unforgiven 2003. I think it was an okay match, but this. Is it, hor is it a worse match? No. You know, it's not. It's not horrible. There have been horrible Survivor Series matches before and after 2003, but um, it's not a good match. It's not a, a approved more for that match at Unforgiven. again. But this was just like over. It's just overbooked. Um, I don't feel like this match belong on a Survivor Series. It felt like it's a, it felt like it's a match on Raw, a normal episode of Monday Night Raw. That's just it. You know, like you know, Goldberg had their moments in the early parts of the match. And like in a picture of Leisure, trying to pick up, uh, trying to like do a, like the gorilla press, but unfortunately his ankle gave the way, and then Triple H kind of like working on the injured ankle of Goldberg, like one more of the match, kind of place Goldberg's uh, injured ankle and smacked it with the chair. It's funny, the last Goldberg match I covered was his match against Diamond Dallas Page in WCW. It was at Halloween Havoc 1998 when Goldberg. Was the world champion and fast forward at Survivor Series 2003, that's WWE's um, biggest show of the year, and Goldberg as the world champion. This is night and day because DDP is a most athletic guy, but this, you know, Triple H and Goldberg, no chemistry. Goldberg is so exposed, you know. I feel like he's prefer competing in shorter matches, and Flair didn't really help this match, you know. Flair was just like interfering, working on Goldberg's injured leg, you know, it got very old, you know, I almost give it like, gonna play it two stars, but besides that, you know, I'm not saying it's completely horrible, but it's just the weakest match of the night, you know, it's just, you know, why they put it in the main event, uh, I'll get to more of that shortly, but um, yeah, you know, I'll try to keep it short and simple, you know, you know, it was, it was too much whistleblowing, oh, too much interference, you know, one more of the match, you know, like, Triple H hits Goldberg with a with the brass knuckles, um, and Goldberg fucked up the uh, the free count. You know, trying to do like the trying to get out of the count free. Um, in Triple H hits uh, Earl Hebner with the arm, um, uh, with a I think it was an elbow drop on his back, and then you and then you know and then Goldberg grabbed this still the sledgehammer, hit Flair with it, Orton and Batista. I don't think he hit Triple H with the sledgehammer. It hit Triple H with the spear and the jack uh, hammer to win this match. 
Everton World Heavyweight Championship. So, yeah, it's just like, why, you know, it had a crap, a weak story, and a, and this match was weak. You know, I think it's the right on the wall of Goldberg. You know, you can tell like the Goldberg experiment as the as the man. You know, it's never got. It's like it's failed. You know, like they're trying to make Goldberg into the WWE's version of Goldberg, not why he's successful in WCW. You know, what I mean is longer matches, Triple H and Goldberg, no chemistry. You know, it's just like the only best match in his first run in the company was against hit him and him and Jericho. Since then, after that, you know, he's in his his match with Triple H. You know, it's just like. Like I said, I think he should have won the title at SummerSlam, you know, instead of Unforgiven. It's just like, you know, because Goldberg ended up dropping the belt to Triple H, um, you know, in a triple threat match and Unforgiven, uh, not Unforgiven, Armageddon the following month, you know. You can tell, like, the whole, I think this rivalry is, did not live up the hype. And <laughs> the kind of promote Goldberg's t-shirt says, bully in the hype, but the hype is just, there is no hype, you know, you know, I think he's just too exposed, you know, I think they're just like, you know, they're, they're trying to see him, Goldberg, trying to make Goldberg as the top guy in the company, unfortunately, on, on the on the Raw brand, but unfortunately, they kind of pull the plug on the Goldberg push, you know, I think the one per, the one match should really end Survivor Series 2003, it's got to be Team Bischoff versus Team Austin, you know, I feel like the stuff with Austin walking out, that should be the end. If they did that, that would be good. It's a good way to end Survivor Series. But um, it's just what it is. I don't want to get into it, but, um, you know, that's just me. Anyway, so my final overall rating for Survivor Series 2003, I'm going to give it a 10.5 out of 10. Um, it's debatable which one is the best um, Survivor Series of all time. You know, I say Survivor Series 02 is the best of all time because that MSG. Shawn Michaels won the World Heavyweight Championship, his first world title in years, since 1998, you know, but this is very close, you know, you know, it's, uh, I think it's a really good show, it's in the top two, you know, I think the top three, or in the top five, really in the top three, you know, it's funny, like, in, in, you know, I reviewed, um, one of the best Survivor Series, you know, Survivor Series 02, Survivor Series 98, and Survivor Series 2003, you know, it's in the top five, Best Survivor, Survivor Series show of all time. I think most of the matches deliver. The only thing in the back for me has to be Gold, uh, Goldberg Triple H, you know. Not a terrible match, you know, but still bad. Um, the only thing in the okay is Undertaker versus Finn's in a Buried Alive match, you know. Like I said, it's just an angle disguised as a match. But um, there's some good to great matches, you know. Set up, you know, some matches got future, got future legends of the business, you know. The, the two Survivor Series matches um, deliver. Um, the women's title match was fun. Same as the tag team title match. I like the ambulance match between Shane and Kane. And yeah, yeah, the one match is ha, ha, got to be match of the night. And it is the match of the night. Is the Raw Survivor Series match. Team Bischoff versus Team Austin. So yeah, I'd advise to watch Survivor Series 2002 for more. So to enjoy it. To watch most of the, the matches. The, 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 the only match you got to avoid is the main event. So, you know. Yeah, I really like it, you know. So that is my, yeah, that's my review of Survivor Series 2003. What is your thoughts on Survivor Series 03? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. Smash the like button, click the like, click the bell, subscribe to the Central Man Network for wrestling videos and more. Next time, since I keep bringing, since I bring up Arm Again 2003, the next classic WWE pay-per-view review I'm going to review is Arm Again 2003. The most notable moment of the show is Evolution. Winning all the gold, and they, they also got all the power. That's until next time. Until then, this is the sentiment officially signing out. Check you later, folks. And that's my review of Survivor Series 2003. I give it two thumbs up.